So we're at the Radio Festival with Paul Gambaccini, um, and on stage you're going to be talking about your new book, I saw some serialisation of it, and it made quite a harrowing tale. Tell us, in, in a short form, the, 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 the privacy book, why do, you, why do you decide to write it? One year in two minutes. Wow. Uh, well, I was not going to let the Metropolitan News and the Prosecution Service write the last chapter of the story. I knew if I wanted the story to be told, honestly, I would have to do it. And how long has it taken to write? You, you kept diaries at the time through the, through the year. Yes, I did, never dreaming that it would be a year, of course. I, I thought it would all be over in my initial bail period of three months because I never knew the two people involved. So I thought, well, this is going to be fast. And then they just kept rebelling me. And, and so the book wound up being 873 pages because I just kept going because it kept going. And then finally, when it was over, I performed what I call the hatchet job edit and cut half of it, which wasn't as hard as it may sound because it was I was angry every day. So it was getting pretty repetitive. One may say it's still repetitive. But anyway, I uh, chopped out half of it and that was easy. And then we did the fine tooth comb. And uh, finally, thanks to these good people, uh, my pack publishing, it is now out. My husband took the cover photo when I wasn't looking. And it's out on the stage. And how much of, of a relief is it for you to be able to tell your side of the story in full? Because obviously you were restricted during the time about what you want to say. Well, yes, but not only are you restricted, you don't want to be the cover guy because the police are hoping there will be what I call fan players. In other words, they hang you up like a piece of flight paper in the hope that someone else will be attracted to accusing you. So you don't want to be the cover guy because you don't want to remind people. Here's somebody who can accuse So fortunately, nobody has ever been accused me, and the whole thing collapsed because it wasn't. Now, the Crown Prosecution Service dragged it out, uh, but I think that was for their own purposes. I would love to have seen my complete YouTube file, and I would, I, I've said publicly I invite Alison Saunders to release my entire file because since I never knew the people, there can't be anything in it other than lurid fan fiction of the Fifty Shades of Grey variety, and I've always wanted to read Fifty Shades of Grey. As a broadcaster, we've had decades on the air. How was that period when you couldn't go on the air when Radio 2 said we don't have a problem? Brian Paddock, iconic policeman, now in the House of Reports, said to me, although it sounds counterintuitive, you must thank me for the good things that did for you, as well as the obviously bad. And one of the good things they did for me was let me know that I could live without the rest. Because when you're in the midst of a 40 year career, you think, oh my God, could I survive mentally without this? Tony Blackburn asked the question every week. And uh, I was forced to not broadcast, and guess what? I lived. So although I prefer to broadcast, I could live without it. And that's an important thing to know. And do you have a different outlook on life when you are broadcasting? <laughs> Well, it's the first time anyone's asked that particular question, because although I am a very different person now, and I'm probably the same broadcaster, in other words, a character that I am in each different show, Radio 2 me, Radio 4 me, they're pretty much the same guy, because I don't break character. When I'm on Radio 2, for example, I don't burst into a defense of Jeff Richard. That would be unprofessional. I never break character. So I'm still the same radio character, but uh, personally, uh, I, uh, I suppose that's another one of the things I should thank the police for, because they motivated me for the right thing. And that was the, the variety of radio work we do, what do you get out of that the most? Well, the different kinds of puzzles. <laughs> but I guess the one that covers all is the moment when you know it's worth it. When you're in a live situation in particular, and you think, what's the fact? That's the biggest thrill that you can possibly have. And uh, whether it's a joke that actually was funny, if you like most of them, or whether it was an observation that actually was touching, which is also rare. So when one of those things happens, you think, gee, that was. 
Okay.